um, the message that I'm getting <clears throat> across these two spreads here is uh, it's time for you to make a move. Okay, it's time for you to reciprocate. It's time for you to let your um, feelings be known and walk towards another person. And um, I feel like this is especially in relationships, but also in your friendships, in your uh, love relationships with family members as well. So I see a lot of inactivity that's happening from your end. And I feel like you're given an opportunity here to turn over a new leaf and to kind of uh, take initiative to really nurture the people around you to be kind of like the the shoulders for them to lean on to be more emotionally supportive and to you know reach out and 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 reconnect with people like hey i haven't talked to so and so in so long i wonder what he or she is up to i haven't seen my sister in a while let me see what's going on with her so it's like time to kind of break out of our shell and extend our goodwill and our concern to other people. And doing so not only will allow you to reconnect with people, but it will also energetically open you up to attract new, newer things, better things, and also to learn to, you know, grow as an, emo as an emotional human being. And I, I'm finding myself stumbling over a lot of words in your reading. So I feel like this is not something that you're, you have done in the past. And this is not something that you're comfortable doing. But I feel like taking that initiative and really extending outwards, is, it's going to help, okay? It's going to, it's like the time for you to do that is now. So don't sit around and wait for, for things. It's really important to be the one to take initiative and to reach out. In your relationship sector, we do have um, two people that I'm seeing here. Um, the first is the uh, earth sign, a Taurus, a Virgo, or a Capricorn. And this is a person that, that might find you to be a little bit um, intimidating because they feel like you have a lot of suitors. You, they feel like you're a little bit flirtatious. And they also feel like they like you. There's attraction. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing that and they're looking at you. But they're like, does this Libra person want a relationship? Do they have what it takes to stick around when times are, are tough? Do they have the inner strength and the resilience? Or are they all fun and games and, you know, here today, gone tomorrow? So I feel like somebody is questioning whether or not you have what it takes to be uh, a serious relationship partner whether or not you're going to hang around and, and be with them through thick and thin and whether or not they can rely on you and whether or not, you know, uh, your intentions, your feelings are, are deep and not just superficial. And the character you're dealing with, the person you're dealing with here is Earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, Sun, Moon, or Rising. This is someone who's very financially stable. They're self-made. They've had to work really, 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 really hard. Okay, Ten of Wands hard work, dedication. This is not somebody that's born into money, uh, that inherits things from mom and dad, that had like, um, you know, things handed to them on a silver platter. Everything that they have accumulated in life, they've accumulated through their sheer determination, their hard work and their dedication. So I might even say, this is a person that prides themselves on being able to be um, to keep their words, to be where they say they're going to be. And they take life in a very, very serious manner. And I almost feel in a way, if you are attracted to this person, which I feel like you very, very much are, you show up here as the Nine of Cups. Things came easily. And if they haven't come easily, you have a lot of choices, you have a lot of options, you have a lot of suitors. And life for you is very lighthearted, very airy. And, you know, it's, it's like, why so serious? And there is definitely opposition that I'm seeing in this um, potential for a union. It can work out, but the way that they see you is they, they feel like you're a little bit frivolous. Um, they're very attracted to you. The Nine of Cups is a really beautiful card that indicates someone who has a really generous heart. They give of themselves and they, they make conversations very easily with a lot of people. They can connect to and, and um, 
uh, talk to people from all walks of life. People generally really like them. And so you ex embody all of these really positive traits. But at the same time, the person you're dealing with, they're very, very serious minded. They want, they're very work oriented. They want to get things done. And when they communicate, they err on the side of productivity. Let's just have this conversation so that we can get to the bottom of things. So they're not, you know, right off the bat, warm and cuddly and, um, they don't like to shoot the breeze just to, to talk. And so they feel almost like you might not be a suitable match for them because you are not as serious minded as they are. So if this is someone you're, you're interested in, try to make that emotional connection, ask them more about themselves, ask them, you know, what inspire you to be in this profession? What inspire, inspire you to be in this career? Uh, how long have you known you want it to be like this? What was your life like prior to this? Ask them those questions that kind of um, hones in on their their thought process and hones in on, on the, the fact that they can tell you a story about all their trials and tribulations that they have gone through to get them where they are right now, where they're very financially uh, independent. And I feel like it's it's really going to help you attract this person and it's going to help the, uh, change the mindset of this person as they view you. If this is somebody that you're interested in, you want to kind of like bring them into the fold with you. This is a strategy that you can enlist, okay? Because I feel like they, they see you as someone who's not very serious. And as a result of it, they're, they're not at a point where they're making any types of offer. I feel like you're dealing with someone who's really, really attractive. Very, very, very incredibly attractive. And um, funnily enough, um, from your end, I, I feel like you're thinking, why do they work so hard? Why are they such a workaholic? Why don't they enjoy the, you know, stop and smell the roses? Why don't they take it easy? Um, and you look at them, the, the person that they are right now, and you're like, they're very financially stable, very financially solvent. And, you know, they're kind of like at the top of their, at the peak of their career. Everything seems to go their way, but you fail to understand everything. You, you don't see this, the struggles behind the scenes, you know, the all, everything that they have to, to get their hands dirty doing in order to get them where they are right now. You, you fail to see this and try to get to know this aspect of the other person that not, not that they're trying to hide it. This is kind of like their pride and joy. This is something they, they, they keep very close to their chest because through the struggles, it shows them how strong they are. And they take really great pride in the fact that they've been through all of this and it didn't break them. It made them so much stronger. And so they don't let a lot of people in to this side of their past. And so once you activate this, I feel like you're going to be able to form that emotional connection and they're going to let you in and they're going to start to trust you and they're going to start to see you as a fun hearted person. But underneath is not all superficial, that there is heart and soul and a really good partner. So I feel like you need to kind of change someone's opinion about you in order to enlist them on their side, on your side, or to make that connection with them. Um, what I'm feeling is, I feel like for many of you, you are definitely um, coming into this month or this week, at least, um, I feel like you're in a relationship. Okay. What's linked up with you here, nine of cups is the Hierophant. And this is the institution of family, marriage. Um, you might be engaged. You might have a um, marriage partner. You might have children. You might have, um, you know, like you might be living together. So this is a, a stable household unit, however you put it. You might be living together with somebody that you're dating. And I feel like if that's the case, the other person feels like they're putting in a lot of the work. And um, they need help. Okay, so check in with your partner. They see you like this, out and about, you know, having fun, taking things very, very lightly, not really caring so much about the practical things. And then they're like this. They're carrying the burden of their entire relationship. Check in with your partner. 
ask them if there's anything that they need help with. And we can't really assume, you know, that our partner can read us and, and understand us telepathically. But it's always a nice gesture to just say like, you know, hey, I'm noticing you're doing a lot. Can I help? Can I alleviate the burden for, from you? Can you, and I, I just keep seeing this sense of the partner being a little bit resentful. And so try to mitigate the impact of that by asking early on, is there anything I can help with? And, you know, if they're doing like a lot of tinkering um, around the house, like fixing up stuff, you know, maybe put in the effort to cook. Maybe you don't even need to ask them. You just do it. Okay. And um, if they're, you know, taking care of the kids, driving the kids to school and um, driving the kids back, picking up the kids from soccer practice, maybe you shower the kids like you, you bathe them at night. And so I feel like there is a, a disconnect in terms of values here. And um, one partner is feeling like they're doing all the work and the other person is not. And, you know, once again, the energy can be reversed. But I'm seeing more of the partner doing a lot of the work or the crush or the love interest. And they're just like, you kind of need to step up your game, okay? Not that they don't love you. Not that they don't, you know, um, they're they're not attracted to you. But I feel like... The, the weight of the relationship is um, it's not just about attraction. It's not just about, you know, lighthearted conversation, fun and games. It's about getting our hands dirty and doing what needs to get done. And especially for the people that we love without them telling us. So it's like sensing things on an intuitive level and then going where you are needed or contributing in the best way that you know how, Okay. Um, the other partner I feel that's in the picture, and especially for those who are in relationship, I see here an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, and then a fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo. And this can be, you know, earth sign rising, uh, sun, moon, or fire sign rising, sun, or moon. Um, you have another person here, and uh, I see this fire sign as somebody who's very, very defensive when it comes to their interaction with you. They, they feel like you joke around too much. And I'm sorry to say that. But the energy is coming in strongly. I, I feel like you're dealing with people who are very, very serious minded. They're, they're very process oriented. They're very end result oriented. They're very much like workaholics. They want to get things done. They want to do things in a timely manner. They're very efficient. So it's like all of these, you know, type A type of energy that you're dealing with. And um, I feel like it's it's polar opposites from you. And so you have somebody that's that's like no, very no nonsense, you know, like TikTok, I'm on a clock. And they're coming to you. And I feel like you're not um, giving them meaningful communication and I feel like they're just going to be on their way out. They're, they're turning their energy around and they're, they're moving away. And so it's been really hard for them to communicate with you and to feel like you're on the same page. It's been really hard for them to get a straight answer from you and feel like you're on the same page with them. And so I have here the nine of wands, defensiveness, someone who feels like they've been rejected and, and who feels kind of like on the defensive mode. And they're just like, is it really worth it for me to invest more time and energy into this person? Uh, or am I better off, you know, leaving the picture? So I, I feel like there are two people here that are in the picture with you and earth sign, fire signs come out strongly. Um, once again, the message that I'm getting is um, relationships, friendships, family uh, situations, okay? Whatever relationship you're hoping to achieve, it has to be reciprocated, okay? All of these cards are really, really beautiful cards. Emotional connections, following up with people, having like a two-way street type of communication, okay, with the Ten of Cups. Um, there is a great need. I feel like there's a person in your family unit who you might have been estranged from. It shows up here as a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. And this is somebody who's off doing their own thing. You've been off doing your own thing. There's a sense of estrangement and a, a reconnection, a reconciliation that 
should be initiated, okay? If you've been thinking about them, if all of a sudden you're thinking about them, reach out. You know, don't just uh, sit still with that information. Reach out and see what they're doing because most likely, psychically, they were probably thinking about you and wondering if you're okay and wondering what you're up to. And they, they kind of need that reassurance from you and they kind of need that connection with you. And so because these three uh, cards are really beautiful, it's followed here by the Ten of Swords. And I feel almost like relationships don't happen in, in, in a vacuum. There needs to be reciprocity. There needs to be this back and forth, you know, reconnecting, catching up. Let's plan lunch dates. Let's, um, you know, we're both busy people. We're both busy with work, with family, with love relationships, with everything else that's going in our lives. But I value this connection. So let's make an effort once a month, once every two months to meet up and so that we can catch up because I value our friendship. I value the, the, the person that you are. I want to make sure you're okay. And I want you to update me on some of the things that are happening with you so that we can have a true emotional connection. It's a two-way street. And uh, I really want you to think about, you know, uh, are there people that from your past that you lost contact with? because you got bogged down in a relationship. So you know how some people, when they're they're single, they're really fun and then they like keep in touch with their friends and like, they're like the, they really, really prioritize their friendships. But as soon as they get into relationships, they're MIA. They're so like, um, they're, they, they kind of sequester themselves behind closed doors with the relationship partner or they you know create the cocoon around themselves and the relationship partner and they're just nowhere to be found and they're not available to their friends i see this energy coming through like that and i feel like it's um it's something that you you might not be aware of but it's something that your friends have told you friends family even so make the effort reach out things don't happen you know it, um in a vacuum, okay? So it's not like, you know, just uh, reaching out through social media, but really making the time to visit, to reconnect with, to be physically there with the other person. So we have an opportunity here to really look at and examine um, what have I done in the past that drove people away? Have I been kind of um, stuck in my little ivory tower and not really making the connection and not really reaching out and not really making the effort to see how other people are doing, what's going on in their lives. Have I just been kind of sequestered here, worried about my own life and my own things? So Libra, it's birthday season. And so it's really important for you to, you know, uh, take the energies, the lessons, the ups and downs of the previous 12 months so that you can, you know, kind of synthesize that knowledge and to become a better, wiser, more enlightened person. And I feel like there are a lot of uh, lessons here about, you know, uh, doing things like meeting the other person halfway, um, not taking relationships for granted, not so much that you're taking them for granted, but I feel like you're a little bit lost in your own thoughts and your own world. And you're not really aware of what other people are doing and what other people are, what challenges other people are encountering. And I feel like you're disconnected from it. Okay. You're disconnected from other people's struggles. So it's time to plug yourself back in and reconnect. All right.